Hey, if you don't want any spoilers, look away. It's been two days since a Loki episode. I caught the episode. Where the fuck were you? <laughs> I'm just playing, folks. It's your boy, Sasha Ackleford here. That's my opener. I stole that from the U.S. version of the TV series, Shameless. Let's get into the Loki episode. Yes. Uh, the Loki season one, the finale, entitled For All Time, Always, which has been the catchphrase for the Time Variance Authority. Um, right into it, the opening credits were like a mishmash of, of quotes from characters from the, from the MCU, um, from various MCU movies. I hear Black Widow, which I saw a few weeks ago. Not bad. Could have been a little bit better, but not bad. Captain America, Black Panther, etc. And then the opening, the opening scene itself was like a, was like a psychedelic CGI, like what we saw in, in the tea drinking scene from Doctor Strange, the 2016 Doctor Strange film. Um, but when he drinks the tea and he's going through the whole universe and he asks, is psilocybin in this tea? But, um... <clears throat> The fact that everything was like a mishmash like that. The opening credits didn't even have the usual, the usual Marvel, Marvel music. The dun 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 dun. They didn't even have that, nah. And it made me think that okay, this is a reference to Limbo, because that's what I posited in last week's video when we saw the two Lokis getting past the uh, Eliath monster and seeing that castle. Yeah, I thought that was Limbo, and I thought that was Tenebrae, the castle that the character of Immortus stays in. But I gotta tell you, we're about to get into that because the episode it officially starts off after all that. There, they, you see the Lokis at the castle, right? And there's some hesitation on the girl Loki on Sylvie's part. She wants to end the TVA. She's waited her whole life for this, but now she's a little unsure. They enter, and who are they met by? The animated uh, anthropomorphic clock, Miss Minutes. And now it feels like a fucking horror movie now that we see her. And the information that she gives leads me, leads me to know just how wrong I was. Yeah, the castle is not Tenebrae at all. It's actually the fucking, the Citadel at the end of time. Yeah, I mentioned that in the first TVA video I did about the Timekeeper's creation and, and about a guy called He Who Remains, who Miss Minutes also mentions. <clears throat> yeah, He Who Remains, <clears throat> according to Miss Minutes, he knows and controls all, and he wants to offer the Lokis a deal. Yeah, he can put them back into their timeline without disruption, and he offers, and he offers Loki, well, through Miss Minutes, he offers Loki the chance to win the battle in New York City against the Avengers, kill Thanos, and usurp the throne of Asgard with Sylvie by his side, but they both reject the offer talking about, we write our own destiny. Now back at the offices for the TVA though, um, Ravona, she's still trying to study the origins of the Time Variance Authority. Miss Minutes comes up and gives her a completely different set of information than what she asked for, talking about he thought it, be, might, it might be more useful to her, but we don't get to see what that information is. Back at the castle, the Lokis are exploring it, and we see three statues of the Time Keepers. One of them is dilapidated and torn and cast down. And there's plenty of dust. And finally, He Who Remains makes his appearance. And who is it? Jonathan Majors! I'm like, holy fucking shit! Weren't we supposed to wait to see him until, until fucking, what's it called, Ant-Man? The third Ant-Man film in 2023? Anyway, I'm glad he's here. I'm glad he's here. And he's very quirky. He's very... It's a hell of a performance that he gives, and it's a very, it's very more lively compared to his subdued, nuanced performance that he had in last year's HBO series Lovecraft Country. Yep. But this, but he who remains, he's very casual. Um, what else he does? He um, he's sitting there just eating an apple, and he's draped in purple as well, too, like a purple cloak. He claims he knows everything, and he's able to get out of the way of when Loki when Sylvie tries to kill him, because, <laughs> like I said, he knows everything, but to a certain point, he's able to anticipate all their moves, but he lampshades 
he lampshades their and our, the audience's expectations when he says, not what you were expecting, am I? Yeah, that's a fucking understatement. Back at the TVA office, Mobius makes his returns to re makes his return, and Ravona is surprised as hell. She tries to call security to her office, but Mobius reveals that he knows her secret. Yeah, at the beginning of the episode, in the opener, in the in the um, the flashback, the flashback to last week's episodes and the other events that have transpired before that. If you remember, in the second or third episode, we saw a pen, right? A pen that had Franklin F Franklin D. Roosevelt High School written on it. And they closed up on it, and we and the fact that they had a close up on it meant that it was going to be important at some point. Well, it just showed back up here, and its significance is revealed. What happened is, <clears throat> Mobius, as soon as Ravona tries to call security on him, Mobius reveals that he knows her secret, and the scene cuts to um, what's it called, Fremont, Ohio, in 2018, to a high school where a soldier is looking for a woman named Rebecca Kermanet. And, and they end up in her office, and she has like an Ohio State University diploma up there. And this Rebecca person is actually Ravona, or some variant of her, right? But the uh, Hunter D90 or Hunter D15, the, the, the Viola Davis looking chick, as I call her, she manages to, manages to convince the other soldier that Rebecca is not R Ravona Renslayer that they know. And then she decides to tell him everything that she knows. But again, that scene isn't expounded upon, nor do we see what, what came out of it. Back at the Citadel at the end of time, though, the um, the backdrop, the color of the backdrop, it shifts from like blue to purple. And he who remains, he reveals that he knows that everything, he knows everything the TVA doesn't. And he's seen all the intimate moments between the Lokis that they've had and all the events that we've been seeing from like them being pruned them getting past Eliath to finally entering the castle, he's claiming he paved the way for that. And he paved the way for them to get there for one final endgame, and he poses a question of trust to both Lokis that's like a piercing in both of their armors. Now back at the TVA, Mobius and Ravona are arguing. Ravona, she, she's like a cult. She's like a, a, a true believer in like a cult. She thinks the timekeepers are real and that someone created them. Well, she's right about that, but just not in the way that she thinks she is. Ravona, she's like she believes wholeheartedly in their mission, so wholeheartedly that she's blind, right? She tries to tries to shift blame to Mobius about him being pruned, so talking about you betrayed me. Talking about he betrayed her because he acted out of free will. He argues that you can't fuck with people's free will. We're all variants. She claims that he's no danger to her even with one of those pruning weapons. And she disarms him, doesn't prune him, but uses a tempad to tell him that she's gonna go in search of free will, whatever that means. Back at the Citadel, he who remains, he keeps talking about how he admits that his methods are deceptive, but without him and the TVA, then everything goes to shit. And he reveals some of his origins, like he reveals to Loki that what he is afraid of is himself. And what he means by that is, he's been, and I quote, a ruler, a conqueror. He who remains, a jerk. And he reveals that he has a 30, and this harks back to the source material about Kang the Conqueror and Immortus, who Jonathan Majors is supposed to play Kang, mind you. As we all know, what am I telling you all that for? But anyway, he reveals that he has a 31st century variant on Earth who discovered parallel universes and that he had a counterpart in each one of these parallel universes. And they all learned the same thing. Eventually, they all met each other, and there was peace. Narcissistic, self-congratulatory peace. They all shared technology, knowledge, and tried to improve the universe, but not all of his variants were good. <coughs> Kang. <coughs> Some of them saw the new universes as realms to be conquered. And each and that started the multiversal war that we kept that we've been hearing about. See, each one of these variants of he, they've been fighting fighting to preserve their own universe and get rid of the others. The first variant in question, he encountered a creature that created a rift in all different realities and could consume reality and energy. This being was Eliath. He tamed Eliath ended the multiversal war, and isolated our timeline to prevent any further branches. 
hence the creation of the Time Variance Authority with its efficient bureaucracy, as he calls it, and the Time Keepers. He thinks if the Lokis think he's evil, then wait till they meet his other variants, <clears throat> Kang, again. But in the meantime, he offers them a choice. They can either kill him and be in charge of the TVA and be its benevolent rulers, or... Actually, no. They can kill him and spawn all of his counterparts and create another multiversal war, or they can just... Or he'll, he'll cede control over the TVA over to them. They want to know why he would give all that up, though. He says he's tired and older than he looks. Again, that's a good point. He is older than he looks. It's good. That's a good... We'll get back to that. Yeah, he who remains... Jonathan Majors, he who remains is very hammy, but he has a point. All of them are villains, so the Lokis, they shouldn't act so self-righteous. However, the music becomes darker, and he his facial expression changes, and he gets scared, talking about they've crossed a threshold. They cross a threshold because he no longer knows what's going to happen at that point anymore. Now, the timeline is branching for some reason. He, if he's killed, another multiversal war happens, and all of his counterparts, they all battle each other, and he ends up right back where he started anyway, right in the Citadel, ending the war. Sylvie tries to kill he, but Loki, he, he stops her, tries to reason with her, and neither of them... Neither of them can trust, and neither nor can either of them be trusted. And they have a fight scene and a kiss, which ends with Loki, well, with Sylvie using the temp pad to send Loki back to the TVA's office. Um, she seemed pretty sad to do that from the way she looked. But, uh, when she finally gets to He Who Remains, she kills him, and his final words are, <laughs> See you soon. And that's when the timeline starts branching. Now, back at the TVA's office, the Viola Davis guard and Mr. Mobius, they, they're they looking at all the branching timelines, and they're like, there's no turning back. Loki, he's back at the office. He looks sad and despondent, but he eventually, he eventually gets his resolve and begins looking for Mobius. He finds him and tells him about all that's happened, tells him about he who remains, but Mobius, they, Mobius doesn't know who he is. Doesn't remember him, doesn't recall him. He thinks he's a TVA analyst. And Loki, he's very terrified now. And there's some ominous music as he looks up. He looks up, and where the statues of the timekeepers once were, there's now a giant one of he who remains. Now here's my thoughts. Yeah. In the book... He Who Remains is actually the final director of the Time Variance Authority, and he creates the timekeepers from all their temporal energy, right? <clears throat> but he has no origin in the book, and here in the MCU, they tied He Who Remains to Kang the Conqueror or Immortus. I think that's really Immortus that we've been seeing the whole time. Who? Listen, for all y'all folks, hold on. Sorry. This guy right here, Immortus, him right here, yeah. He's Kang the Conqueror's future self, and he lives in, in, in Limbo and in that castle, which I thought was, which I thought was <clears throat> Tenebrae. Yeah, and the Citadel at the end of time, the timekeepers, they actually live there. And that's where, they, that's where they await the heat death of the universe so that they can actually survive into the next universe and create a utopia there. And speaking of the timekeepers... This right here is their first appearance right here. The Mighty Thor 282. Funny thing is, all these time-based groups really and entities, they had their first appearance in the Mighty Thor. Thor 245 right here. This is the first appearance of He Who Remains. Thor 372. This is the first appearance of the, of the Time Variance Authority. And if you recall in the episode, this 372 number right here, yeah? At the end of the episode, in the bottom left corner, in the final scene when Loki is looking up at the statue all terrified, there's a, there's a 372 number listed in one of, the, one of the TVA office columns in big black letters. It's a nod to this book right here. Very clever reference. Glad they put that in there. Um, but yeah, seeing Jonathan Majors in here, that was a, that was a big surprise. Yeah. And he, he's talking about all of his, uh, different, all of his different counterparts. He's, just, he's not just talking about all the different... Well, he is talking about all the different Kangs. That's a reference to that. 
and the Council of the Kangs that all get together, but they can't be trusted at all. Yeah, the Council of the Kangs, that group, all the Kang, the Conqueror counterparts, they're, they're practically as large as the TVA itself. Um, what else? The self-congratulatory narcissistic peace line, that's a reference to when Doctor Doom, the Fantastic Four villain, and, and, and Kang's possible ancestor, that's a reference to when Doctor Doom encountered uh, Kang's earlier incarnation, the Pharaoh Ramatut, and they realized that they might just be the same person. Might be, but they're not. Not in the book anyway, but given that they've never gave a proper origin to the TVA, it, it is entirely plausible that He Who Remains is a counterpart of Kang, Immortus, the Pharaoh Ramatut, or whatever. At least, and now, given how Loki ended, yeah, it is going to have a season two, and it beggars a lot of questions. Like, with the branching timelines, did Loki land in some separate timeline where nobody knows who he is, where the TVA does no longer knows who he is? And if so, how is that possible? The TVA, they operate out of a, a dimension where time can't be fucked with. So they should already know who Loki is, or at least have him on record somewhere. And of all these shows, all these Disney shows that have appeared on Marvel so far, WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and Loki, I like Loki the best because it really lives up to its, uh, it really lives up to the title of its previous episode, the penultimate episode, Journey into Mystery. This whole season was a mystery, and it looks to be a bigger mystery once we get to season two to figure out what happened here. Um, and at least we know, and from how it ended, at least we know how, how movies like, uh, Doctor Strange, The Madness of the Multiverse, and the Ant-Man Part 3, Quantumania, and the, and the, and the What If series that recently got a trailer. At least we know how, no, at least we know how they're going to pan out for Phase 4. Yeah, overall, Loki, this was a good series. And Tom Hiddleston, he could play this character forever, man. I'm convinced of that now. He owns his role just as much as Robert Downey Jr. owns Iron Man, or Chris Evans own, owns Captain America, or Chris Hemsworth owns Thor. But that's my thoughts on the series. I liked it. Tell me what your thoughts are. Peace.